What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Back on the boss man, show friend of the show, Coach Mike McGarvey, Lafayette Leopards out of Pitcher League. Mike, good to see you, man. Good to see you somewhere in Atlanta as well at, at Lake Point. How you doing, brother? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on again. It was great to see you in the summertime out recruiting um, in your hometown, which is always fun. Yes, indeed, man. Let me ask you, man, uh, uh, how has it been this offseason for you um, trying to get things going and get out to your first four years to head coach now and second going into year two now so how'd you kind of self-scout this summer for you and your staff to make sure you all are getting better and staying ahead of the curve right now yeah that's a great question I think we finished very well right tied for second in the Patriot League and we got close enough to compete for a championship in mid-February so that, that's what you want to be doing as a team and uh, want your program to be competitive in that way um, but towards the end, we didn't play our best basketball. And, and that's the one area where I said, OK, what what does it take here with this group returning um, in terms of consistency and making sure that we have that push into March where we can perform our best in conference tournament play? Um, and the two things that we looked at as a staff pretty critically was our, our offensive transition rate. Um, we scored it pretty well when we were in transition, but we were a slower paced team. And we didn't get out often enough to get easy baskets. So that's one area that we'll focus on moving into this season to play a little bit faster and make sure that we're trying to get earlier baskets uh, in transition with advantage play. Um, and then, then the other area was offensive rebounding. So those two things, you know, and, and I think those two areas contributed to pace of play, put us in uh, some positions where we had to grind out some games, especially late in games with uh, with tight scores. Um, so if we can improve in those areas, I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be a much better offensive team all around. Um, but it will just contribute to, to having more balance from the defensive end to the offensive end. 100 percent, you know, and, and I know a lot of coaches have been talking to me about one wanted to crash your glass a little bit more. So how do you kind of balance crashing versus getting back in transition? Those are all the tough balance trying to balance those two things. How much do we crash? How much do we get back in transition? So how do you kind of balance that as well? Yeah, I think just being comfortable with having the more aggressive mindset. And, uh, you know, we might give up a layup now and then if we're going and we're crashing and we're trying to get offensive rebounds. 
Um, but over a 40 minute game, if we can go offensive rebound and get more possessions and get more stick backs and opportunities at the rim or, or kick out threes, um, then whatever we give up in transition, although it might be very loud, it might be a breakaway or something like that. It might be, you know, the, by percentages, I think we'll be in a, in a better uh, position to score rather than give up transition. Um, so it, it is a balancing act, but it starts with just the mentality of we're going to be aggressive. We're going to go after the ball. Um, and the objective of for defense, at least for us, is to get the ball back anyway. So if we can go get that off of the rim before we have to play defense, then that's good for us. In this summer, how much did you use analytics try to teach, show your guys who were returning from last year and the guys transferring in about their hot and cold zones? You know, I know my dad talks, talked about with his players, you know, even in high school, you're not good inside the floor. You shoot from the right side of the floor right here. So how much did you use analytics to help your guys understand where their short shot profile should be at and what's a good shot for them inside your offense? Yeah, we're very fortunate. So uh, I'm an assistant coach in Nikolai Arnold, who has been, you know, heading our analytics ever since I was the head coach at Lycoming. So he's got years under his belt in looking at uh, objective statistics and how that applies to not only individual performances, but also our team and lineup data as well. Um, he's also took the initiative and started an analytics group on campus for student athletes. I mean, for students in general uh, to be part of our team and, and help us out with some behind the scenes uh, data tracking. So we've done that. Uh, pretty extensively as a staff um, but how much do we share with the players that's always the debate um, you know and and I think it, it gives us some good indicators on some areas of improvement and and what some of the guys are doing very well um, and we'll have those conversations and we'll show the numbers to back back up those things in terms of trying to get them uh, to perform an optimal level uh, but at the end of the day it's also a, a player's game and we want them to be free to make decisions and to feel confident in doing that and not be overloaded by information um, um, so we share, but we don't uh, overload them with that info so that they feel like they can't make the decision on the court and be a ball player. 100%. And that's that great balance again about how much to give, make, make sure there's the right mix of it. And this summer, Mike, uh, with you guys' with workouts, was it more development-wise or more trying to do team stuff? Because with this new new era we're in, we have we have a new team every year. So how much do you have to kind of tweak the summer to say, let's do some, 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 some concepts offensively and defensively versus just sheer development all summer long. Yeah, we're fortunate. We didn't have any scholarship players enter the transfer portal. So uh, I felt really good about our team and, and the returning group that we have. Um, we've got six seniors that have all played meaningful minutes, and we've got a group of really talented freshmen um, to come in here. So for the summertime, it was a little bit more big picture concepts, um, trying to get the guys to play a little bit faster, like we mentioned before, um, to get the competitive nature in a practice setting ramped up as quickly as we possibly could, um, especially for the younger first year players to, to get uh, you know acclimated with what it takes to be consistent on the court over the duration of an hour workout or two hour practice. Um, so, so that's where we spent most of our time. Um, uh, but also, you know, we, we've got really good player development. I mentioned Coach Nikolai Arnold with the analytics, but uh, we've got three other assistant coaches in Darius Dangerfield, Sean O'Brien and Cameron Ayers, who played at a significantly high level um, and have all had individual careers that, that our guys look up to. So having them on the court to improve skills and, and get extra shots and, and to see the game in different ways from an individual standpoint was the secondary aspect of how we used the summer. No doubt. And, and Mike, for those young guys, man, I talk about getting them to see about how to have the right habits, be consistent every day in the weight room, in the film room, off the court, really loving the game of basketball and getting those guys to understand how much dedication it takes at the, the, the D1 level to be a great player. Sure. Uh, I think we did a nice job of recruiting um, players that already have that. Um, and it's not perfect, right? So every single individual has a different journey and in, in when, it, when it relates to like how much effort do they put into it? How, do they understand how to manage their day? What aspects of their game are they really focusing on? Whether it's diet, sleep, film study, extra shots, whatever it might be. Um, so all those things go into you know, creating the optimal performance when it comes time to play. Um, so you know, we do spend significant time trying to help guys and meet them where they're at and then push them a little bit further and, and take it you know, one week at a time. Um, but really, you know, I, I feel great because our, our first year guys, not only do they have great habits on and off the court, but they also have great enthusiasm. Um, so I mentioned that combination of having upperclassmen that have been in significant games and can lead with the enthusiasm and talent of our younger group. So it's been a really cool culture and dynamic um, for this year. 
You got five freshmen, and you know, it's world of everybody wants to get older and stay older. You got five young guys in the pipeline. So talk about high school recruiting right now and how as the COVID guys age out this year and, you know, the high majors are looking at the high school guys, you how can get a, a, some quality talent internationally and domestically of high school players that you usually want to get when guys are just focused on being old and staying old in that portal. Yeah, well, look, Lafayette is one of the best academic schools in the country, right? So we're, we're fortunate to be in that cluster of Ivy and Patriot League schools that, that provide strong academics and Division I basketball. Um, so, so that helps us attract talented student athletes, uh, regardless of whether it's transfer portal or um, freshman uh, out of high school. Uh, where, where I think, you know, I, I mentioned that we didn't have any uh, scholarship players enter the portal. Um, we're not immune to that. So what the future holds, uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but we might have to supplement at some point with some transfers. And uh, But what I've noticed for us at Lafayette is that um, a lot of the mid-major schools and the high-major schools have been taking transfers. And, you know, I, I watched the Mick Cronin interview the other day from the Big Ten Media Day, and he talked about like 50% of the roster in some cases have been flipped over. We haven't had that. So when you look at what some schools that are in mid-major plus or high major that may be a little bit elevated from what our level is, uh, they're taking other college players, with, which leaves a void to get really talented high school players. Um, and I think that we're in a position with the kids that we have committed for the 2025 class, in addition to the freshmen that we have on our roster now, um, to have the most talented recruiting, back-to-back -back recruiting classes, I think, in you know maybe the history of Lafayette, which is exciting. And what I love about your roster, Mike, is you got guys from six two to seven foot tall. So talk about defensively. It's gonna help you guys be very multiple and very and very much variable how you play. Switch, switch things on defense. Do a lot of different things that way. So talk about having that, that ability to, to play the multiple ways with the size you have on, on your roster from six, six two to seven foot tall. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting because there's a lot of combinations right. Right now, so for October 7th or 8th or wherever we're at, I'm thinking about all the different uh, possibilities that we have amongst our roster because we are pretty tall and long. We've got positional length and we've got a bunch of combinations that could be exciting, whether that's defensively, whether it's offensively. Um, but yeah, I think that for the to speak specifically to defense, uh, we're anchored by a seven footer who is one of the best block shot, shot blockers and rim protectors in the country a year ago as a junior. Um, and Justin Vanderbond. So uh, having that stability to protect the rim, to cover in ball screens, to be able to alter shots and defensive rebound um, is something that every single coach wants in their program because it, it allows you to be a good defensive team with that type of anchor. And then the athletic Athleticism and the ranginess with our wings and our forwards. Um, our speed is, is really impressive with our guard play. Um, so we, we can be creative. We can trap a little bit. We can play more 94 feet. We can switch ball screens. We can trap the ball screens. We can rotate out of some things aggressively. Uh, I've liked where our team is at this point uh, in the season when it relates to our ability to defend and, uh, and use that ranginess that you're speaking about. No doubt, man. You know, he he's seven foot tall guy can cover a lot, a lot of mistakes, man. So make a mistake. You got somebody behind you that can really help you at the rim, man. So it's, it's great to have that seven foot, that seven footer in the middle anchor and everything, man. And also for you, Mike, um, as we get close to November the fourth, tipping off against Villanova, man, uh, how excited are your guys to get into some of these close scrimmages, man, and scrimmage to see another another color, man? I know how it used to be, man. He wants to see somebody else at some point. Yeah, it, it, I don't think you're in Atlanta right now. You must be in our practice gym uh, because we're, we're hitting that that wall, that stage where we can sense a scrimmage coming. We can sense an exhibition coming. We know that November 4th at Villanova is right around the corner. Um, I, look, I, I think we're a little bit advanced from where we where we were the last couple of years um, for this time of, of the season. And with that comes a little bit of uh, uh, anxiety or anxiousness to get out there and compete against somebody else. Um, we're, we're sensing that we're, we're feeling that out. Um, it, it's getting a little bit, uh, monotonous competing against each other and we play really hard on a consistent basis. So well, we're looking forward to seeing a, a different color Jersey and seeing where we stand with them. It's not going to be pretty basketball, obviously in October, but when we get into November and we start playing those games, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see where we're at. The main thing is compete without hurting somebody. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main thing. Let's compete without hurting one of our own. You know? That's right. That's right.
Hey, that's happening all across the country. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I talked to a bunch of friends and and their programs, and they've got some injuries. And they, they, you know, two weeks or three weeks into like the twenty hour uh, season, yeah, you start to get a little bit of those things as you anticipate playing some games. But um, we've been knock on wood, we've been okay and pretty healthy, and hopefully that remains that way. Yes, no, no, no doubt, Mike. You know, I was looking at your schedule, man. You got Villanova, as we mentioned, LaSalle. You got Rhode Island. You go down to GW. Uh, Talk about those playing those teams like that, man, and preparing you for that pitch league play and just knowing to get that experience experience of playing these different historic places in in Pennsylvania and around the the Mid-Atlantic area and really get to show show what they can do against higher competition. Yeah, for sure. For us being in East Coast and Mid-Atlantic located and, you know, right right outside of Philadelphia and close to New York, you know, for us to play those games is important. We've got a lot of uh, alumni in the region. Um, and our players love playing those higher level games, right? So getting a chance to compete against those is good experience, but it also tells us exactly where we're at. Um, and if you look at what happened a year ago, like we did not perform well playing a really tough schedule and we didn't get the wins, but the things that we were doing, uh, we felt comfortable that they were going to translate once we hit Patriot League play. So playing that tough schedule allowed us to start off with a seven game win streak in Patriot League play and and put us in position to kind of ru- make a run and and be competitive in our conference which ultimately is what we want to do year in and year out as we look into this non-conference schedule uh, i think it's going to be a little bit of the same um we're, go- we're going to play some elevated talent some big programs and um i, I think that it's going to give our chance our guys a chance to be competitive right away but also understand that w- things that we're doing now we're preparing ourselves for in january and february and then you know ultimately in march when it all matters for us mid-majors and Mike, how cool is it to have a uh, MC on campus, man? Talk about that, man. It's been to have an MC on campus, had getting good quality opponents to come in and play you guys and really show off what, what Lafayette's all about, man. Yeah, it's great. So, like in our region, we have access to so many different, uh, you know, areas in the Lehigh Valley. Um, it, it's easy to travel in from the north, from the south. You, you can fly into Newark or New York. You can fly into Philadelphia. We have an Allentown airport. Um, so when we sat down as a staff and thought about, well, what are we going to do for especially the holiday after Thanksgiving? You know, can we play in a tournament? Can we host a tournament? Um, we felt like this area provides a great opportunity to host teams um, in, in terms of what accommodations we have you know, locally, um, but then also to, to host home games against teams that are like us. Um, where those were the two top priorities. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, I, I hope that we are going to have a lot of support in our own building in Kirby. Um, but I know the players are excited, too. We don't have to travel over that time. We get a chance to play some home games. And it's right back to back to back. So it should be an exciting weekend. Yeah, kind of give you a little tournament feel to kind of prepare how it's going to go when tournament time comes around, you know, so with that pressure of doing that, man. And so it's definitely great. And, Mike, the last one for you, man, talk about how the Patriot League's basketball has even gotten so much better over the years, man, and how – People should really check it out more because it's some quality ball going on in the Patriot League. And there's a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players, a lot of guys you'll see overseas eventually after they get done done in, in Patriot League play. Yeah, you're right about that. So, you know, you can look back into some of the recent future and we've got guys like Mike Muscala and CJ McCollum, um, Malcolm Miller and all in the NBA. Right. So from from our small league to to have players in the NBA and then also kind of littered across international basketball, there's plenty of graduates that have gone on to play professional basketball. So having the opportunity to play pro uh, from our conference is definitely there, which is exciting for for the players that we get a chance to coach. Uh, you you hit the nail on the head uh there's i got a ton of respect for the coaches in our league uh, they're very well studied um they, they have uh they run great concepts offensively and defensively every single game you feel like each coach and team is very well prepared for what you're going to do um so you really have to bring your best to be able to be competitive in our conference day in and day out um, I will say that I do believe that the league has gotten better this year compared to a year ago. I think most teams are, are improved uh, in significant ways. Um, obviously, getting older is number one, but also, you know, just like us, adding some talent. Um, and uh, and we've got like five or six teams that return a ton from successful Patriot League uh, seasons. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of parity within the conference, and it'll be fun to watch throughout the season for college basketball fans. Well, Mike, I hope we're talking in March, man, when you're going to the big dance. I hope we're talking in March of that off week, and then you see where you're going to get to you there, man. So I'm put put it in the air right now, man. I was gonna say, great to see you in Atlanta. Um, I'll be cheering for you all year long, man. And you know, anytime you want to come on the show, man, I'm, I'm glad to have you, brother. I appreciate you, my friend, and I hope to talk to you in March as well. Uh, hey, thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man.
Thank you. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.